A deficiency in this vitamin can have devastating effects that we don't want to ever experience, and it's more common than you may think. This deficiency is affecting nearly 25% of the population. This vitamin is needed for blood formation, myelin formation, proper hormone function, metabolism, to convert carbohydrates into usable energy, and more. Today, we are going to talk about vitamin B12. Pernicious anemia, nerve and brain damage, which in some cases can be irreversible, reduce sensitivity to pain, tingling, mimicked multiple sclerosis, vision loss, hallucinations, depression, psychosis, lack of motivation, personality changes, and other neuropsychiatric disorders, weakness, fatigue, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, tremor, neuropathy, and elevated homocysteine levels, especially in older persons, are all some of the symptoms. B12 is the largest and most structurally complicated vitamin known so far. In the normal digestion process, it requires the glycoprotein intrinsic factor produced by the parietal cells of the stomach to grab the vitamin to then be absorbed by the small intestine. Intrinsic factor can be impaired by low stomach acid, past surgeries, bacteria, aging, and other diseases. Those that have a poor diet consisting of processed foods are more likely to have malabsorption, which can lead to nutritional deficiencies, including vitamin B12. That explains why some of those junk food and beverage companies fortify their products with B vitamins. It's quite genius, actually. These companies know that their products can cause deficiencies, so they add the vitamins in. Alcoholism can cause B vitamin deficiencies. More proof that alcoholism truly makes you stupid. Many doctors rarely or never diagnose a case of B12 deficiency. That's very scary considering the significant damage it can cause to the body. We need more physicians to be aware of this issue and know the signs of this deficiency to help save lives. Diagnosis of this vitamin deficiency is usually based on serum vitamin B12 levels. The problem is that about 50% of patients with a subclinical disease have normal B12 levels. A more accurate screening for B12 deficiency is through the measurement of serum methylmalonic acid and homocysteine levels. Elevated homocysteine and methylmalonic acid levels are a sign of low vitamin B12. In another video, I will talk more about homocysteine and methylmalonic acid. It is estimated that vitamin B12 deficiency can affect 10-15% to of people above the age of 60 due to low stomach acid, thanks to that damn disease we call aging. Through aging, our absorption of protein-bound vitamin B12 decreases, animal-based food sources. Protein-bound B12 has to be released from proteins through digestive proteases, which are enzymes used to break down proteins. Stomach acid is also needed to help break down these proteins. The elderly can sometimes still absorb free-form B12, as long as they still have some intrinsic factor. Thus, it is suggested the elderly take a high-quality B12 supplement, maybe injections just in case. Some Alzheimer's patients were found to have low B12 levels. It may be able to help prevent Alzheimer's and other brain-related disorders. Further research needs to be done to confirm this, but there is one study that shows a possible connection. People with bacterial and parasitic infections oftentimes have B12 deficiency. When you have low stomach acid, you are more likely to have bacteria growing in the small intestine where B12 is absorbed. The bacteria may bind to B12 for their own use. A deficiency in this vitamin can creep up on you and catch you off guard. B12 deficiency can take nearly 5 years to develop and possibly in some cases less than a year. This is because the liver can store some B12 for up to 5 years and release it when the body needs it. This does not mean you can take the vitamin once a year to keep up with stores and not worry about being deficient. It takes an accumulation of large amounts over the years to build up liver stores. It is best to consume B12 daily to avoid deficiencies. B12 is not found in plants, nor can our bodies or other animals make it. Animals eat bacteria that produces the vitamin. This is the vital reason why you should supplement the vitamin to avoid deficiencies, especially if you are vegan or vegetarian. Since B12 can be made by beneficial bacteria, it then brings up the question, do some of those vegans that do not supplement B12 get theirs from fermentation in the gut? It is possible that the probiotic species Lactobacillus may produce B12. Also, Synergy's kombucha contains B12. 
It is fermented with Bacillus coagulans and S. boulardii. B12 can be found in meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. Visit my website or check out my book for a more detailed list of foods rich in B12. Even though it can be found in these foods, you can still be low in it for numerous reasons. One of the main reasons is food quality. It is possible that unethical factory farmed meat can be lower in B12 and other vitamins, leaving you deficient. If you're going to get the vitamin from animal products, make sure they are organic and local if possible. It is not necessary to obtain this vitamin from non-vegan foods if you don't want to. There are some vegan food sources of B12. Be warned though, they are processed fortified foods which are not natural sources. Most of those foods require quite large amounts of consumption to get the recommended daily allowance. Most people go vegan to avoid eating processed foods in the first place. Some of those foods are milks, meat substitutes, and breakfast cereals. People claim some natural fermented foods contain B12, such as tempeh. Studies have shown that there is actually very little B12 in them, and if they do contain it, it's actually from bacterial contamination. Tempeh is made from fermented soy. Soy contains no B12, therefore it must come from the fermentation process. A study found that bacterial contamination of K pneumonia was responsible for the B12 content in tempeh. Therefore, tempeh is not a reliable source unless you want to eat contaminated food and you probably won't find it contaminated in the US. One of my favorite sources of B12 is from Synergy Kombucha, which contains 20% RDA. Not sponsored, by the way. If you're not going to eat animal products or ridiculous amounts of fermented food, then the other alternative which I suggest is supplementation. Supplement some B12 so you don't have to worry about it. Even if you think your diet is good enough, you may be surprised to learn otherwise. Get your levels tested to make sure. Japan's minimum recommended blood levels of B12 is 500 picograms per milliliter, whereas in the United States, it's only 200 picograms per milliliters. I personally will follow Japan's levels. In some cases, B12 injections may have to be used, especially if you are found to have dangerously low levels then a supplement will be suggested for long-term prevention, but you can continue injections if you prefer it over the other options. These pharmaceutical injections do contain additional ingredients that you may want to avoid. Those ingredients are sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, and benzyl alcohol. The most common kind is a capsule that you can take orally and allow to go through the digestive tract to be absorbed. There are other options if your digestion is impaired or if you want a higher absorption rate right to your bloodstream. If you don't know, you can absorb things through your skin, which is why it is crucial to avoid putting chemical products on your body. You can even absorb B12 through your skin. There are some products out there that are in the form of patches to slowly release it through the skin and then directly into the bloodstream. The downside is that you have to wear it People might think you have a nicotine patch on and you'll have to spend your time explaining to them what B12 is or you can just get weird looks for looking like a nicotine addict. Unless you hide it under your clothing. Lastly, there are sublingual pills and liquids that can be used under the tongue which are absorbed directly into the bloodstream. The downside to those is that you have to wait for them to be absorbed. It's up to you to decide which type will work best for you in your life. Leave a comment below with which type you take and why. Maybe it can help others figure out which one they should try. There are different forms of B12 supplements. The most common form is cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is found in pharmaceuticals, supplements, and fortified foods. It is made through bacterial fermentation. It is most commonly used for the fact that it costs less to make. Through this process, small amounts of cyanide is used, roughly 20 micrograms from 1,000 micrograms of cyanocobalamin. The amount of cyanide produced is extremely low compared to the amounts found in most plant-based foods. The lower end lethal dose of cyanide for a 140 pound person is 31,750 micrograms. 20 out of 31,750 is barely noticeable, unless you have very, very weak kidneys. If you're still worried about it, hydroxycobalamin, methylcobalamin, and adenosylcobalamin are other forms of cyanide-free B12 you can take. For cyanocobalamin to be used by the body, it has to be converted into methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. Some claim methylcobalamin is far superior to cyanocobalamin for the fact that it's more bioavailable to the body since it's the active form of B12. There seems to be a contradiction to this. 
hydroxycobalamin and cyanocobalamin can both be processed by the body into methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin, whereas methylcobalamin is not converted into adenosylcobalamin. According to a PubMed article, a deficiency of adenosylcobalamin disrupts the carbohydrate fat and amino acid metabolism, and hence interferes with the formation of myelin. Thereby, it is important to treat vitamin B12 deficiency with the combination of methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin, or hydroxycobalamin or cyanocobalamin. Did you get that? I hope so. If you want to learn more about vitamin B12 deficiency, then check out the book Could It Be B12? An Epidemic of Misdiagnosis. I don't know how many doctors will see this, but I recommend physicians read chapter 11, Information for Physicians. Not for me or you, but for your patients. It makes me wonder why B12 is not a common supplement in hospitals and even psych wards. Well, that's it for this video. Leave a comment below with what forms of B12 you take. Do you take it because you're vegan or what other reasons? If you learned something, then hit like on this video like your life depends on it. If you're new, be sure to click that red button and subscribe to my channel. I upload new health videos often and they may be able to help you. As always, I'm Brennan Goji and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, stay motivated you urban survivors. And thus, it is suggested the elderly take a high- Damn it. There's so many bugs. <laughs> Oops.